Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome Realtors. Uh, I'm David Grossman. You are tuned in to David and Jerry's Real Estate Cafe. This is a special edition of David and Jerry's Real Estate Cafe. We've been um, running these uh, webinars or shows, broadcasts, podcasts, whatever people call them now for a while, Jerry and I have ever since uh, COVID started, Jerry and I have been doing events. We were doing live events, educational events, um, starting approximately one year ago. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, gathering people, bringing in speakers, panels. And as soon as COVID hit, we quickly pivoted. That's, that's the buzzword, right? We pivoted. Uh, we immediately went to the podcast um, uh, format, and uh, it's it's been good because a lot of people who were not able to attend in real life because it was either not re- uh, the right time for them or because they were too far, didn't want to fight the traffic, whatever the case, uh, they've been able to join us. So of course, we miss seeing all our yes, friends face to face. Uh, very much. And we have new people uh, joined. We had some assistance to promote tonight's event from um, different uh, real estate organizations and so on. So we've got some new people. Welcome all of you. If you have not seen uh, our podcast before, uh, it's great to have you. And we hope you'll uh, join us again in the future uh, at future events. But today's topic is, uh, is an important one. And it's something that's on um, uh, all real estate agents mind, should you incorporate? That's, that's the key question. So first of all, Jerry, uh, tell us a, a bit about yourself, because I know you have an amazing background. There's not a lot of people who can say that they've had, you know, a lot of the kind of classical big firm training about how things should be done and can be done. Uh, and at the same time, uh, you have an you have an entre- an entrepreneurial uh, side of you. So give, yeah, give us a little bit you. of background about yourself. Please. Okay, thanks, David. Thanks for the intro. Uh, welcome, uh, all the all our regular viewers and the new ones. So my name is Jerry Hogenhout. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I am a chartered professional accountant. Uh, I'm also a certified financial planner. I'll just give you a very very brief background. Uh, strong tax bra- ta- strong tax background. I worked in the, with Deloitte Touche Chartered Accountants uh, for almost ten years. Worked in their small business department and their tax department. So that gave me a good back good base for for business tax. Um, after the my Deloitte Touche days, I set up my own tax practice and uh, expanded that tax practice to include investment services. Uh, And that really piqued my interest. Uh, I've always been interested in investing, especially real estate investing. Um, And basically uh, today I I, I still have a a public practice in tax and public accounting. And I also have a real estate uh, estate investment company or an overall investment company called Canadian Investment Services. So that's a very brief Mm-hmm. background about me right now, how about you david maybe uh we should uh okay our, well, our new viewers should learn something about you sure uh, well i'll just be i'll just be brief I, I, i'm a mortgage broker i've been arranging mortgages for about 18 years and uh, i specialize in alternative lending work with a lot of real estate agents and um Happy to uh, tr- to work with you, Jerry, to bring uh, this information. I know uh, people always appreciate the advice that you give them, so uh, I'm really pleased to be able to um, to participate in, in, in an event like tonight and and be out in front of uh, some real estate agents. We're not here to really talk about mortgages. I may mention during the podcast, you know, uh, one or two quick things as yeah. to how. Um, the the personal uh, service corporation relates can potentially relate to to mortgage uh, if you're if you're a realtor, but uh, of course the main topic is to talk about um, personal real estate corporation. So so tell us, Jerry, what is what is it all about? I mean, um, people have been reporting personally for many years. Is this for everyone? What, uh, what's, what's, what's yeah, the story? Yeah, well, I mean, that's Jerry. the topic for tonight. So mm-hmm. um, I, I really, I think tonight, uh, I really want to focus on, on just more of a discussion and a chat. Uh, uh, this actually started, uh, legislation was passed before COVID hit. 
So this is, most realtors are aware of this, if not all. So it's been coming. Uh, it, it, it basically, it received all the royal assent. October 1 is the magic day that now realtors can incorporate. And the question is, should they? And so I've watched, uh, I've actually, I've watched a few of my colleagues do a lot of these webinars. So there's been a number of webinars out there. Uh, I, with all due respect, I find a lot of the webinars are out there really get lost in number crunching. Mm -hmm. So I want to kind of stay away from that. I want to talk in concept. I just really want to have a good chat and discussion about this topic. Uh, I think most of the realtors that are on tonight probably, you know, this isn't new. They've been told, uh, their organizations have provided them the information. Tonight is the night to really answer all the questions that people have. I'd really hope that we can answer every single question, not just answer, but discuss it, you know, have, right. have a good discussion about it. So uh, that's the format tonight. Um, you know, this is big, this is huge. I mean, uh, you know, kudos to the real estate organizations, the lobbyists. Uh, they've been after this for years and years and years and years and years. And uh, it, there's huge savings. And I'm a little surprised that there, this has happened, okay? Because the government, uh, real estate agents are gonna save a lot of money and the money they're saving, the government is losing. So I'm a little surprised. So kudos to all the lobbyists that have made this happen. So it's here, so we can incorporate. Uh, so that's our topic tonight. So let's let's just mention that uh, pe people are wondering how long this session is going to be. Our objective is to cover everything in one hour. Okay, so um, by eight thirty, uh, our objective is to have covered everything. We may go longer, but that's we. If we go longer, it's only because there's additional questions. We're willing to stay longer. But if you do, um, if you set yourself one hour from 7.30 to 8.30, our objective is to cover uh, everything. And then if you want more information, you can give Jerry a call. Jerry, how does incorporating, how can it help a real estate agent? Uh, well, it's, uh, you know, I guess that the, the question is, what is a corporation? That's and, a good start. And how does it help? Yes. So. It, a corporation, we probably all heard the description. It's a separate legal entity. Uh, it can own, it can enter contracts. It's a, it's a, it's a legal entity. Okay. Mm -hmm. But to me, the best description, the one I always like to uh, use, and I don't hear much, uh, a corporation, in my opinion, and, and it does, it separates you, the realtor, from your business activities. And that's important because up until now, pre-October 1, for as long as you've been a realtor, you have filed as an unincorporated self-employed person, which in the eyes of tax and the eyes of laws mean your business is you. There is right. no separation. Mm -hmm. Whatever you earn, okay, and I'm gonna repeat this concept, sales minus expenses equals net income. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those are tax terms. Uh, your net income is just simply going on your personal tax uh, return. Okay, you haven't had any alternatives or choices in that manner. So a corporation is a separate legal entity that basically goes in between you, the person, the taxable entity, and your business activities. So that's probably the best description uh, that I can come up with. And that makes a lot of sense in what we're talking about tonight, that it separates it. Okay, um, so how does a realtor know if they should incorporate and when? What's the timing like on this thing? So should you incorporate the, you know, we get asked a lot, what is the dollar amount? When should I incorporate? And in my opinion, uh, the dollar amount isn't the determining factor. What the determining factor is quite simply, if you make more money than you need to live on. So if you have excess earnings, that's where a corporation is advantageous. A corporation, as we'll learn, pays income tax at 12.5%. Okay, that's mm -hmm. extremely low. And historically, the, 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 the theory and logic behind the 12.5% corporate tax rate is really more for manufacturing bigger companies. So if you give them a lower corporate tax rate, they have more retained earnings to build their businesses, buy more machinery, employ more people. So that's the whole concept of the low corporate tax rate. And at first, none of the professional uh, organizations were allowed to use those small, the, the corporations. Uh, 
then all of a sudden the medical industry were allowed to use corporations, the accounting profession, we then legally. So all these professions uh, now are able to use that small lower tax rate and real estate is now basically one of the last or professional organizations that are now allowed to uh, use that. So when you say when, again, it's not a dollar amount. It's not like when I make a hundred thousand dollars, you can, you can net $200,000. If you needed all that $200,000 to pay personal expenses, a corporation isn't going to help you. You have to think of it that you're making excess income. So any of the excess income we can retain in a corporation, pay our 12 and a half percent tax, and we earn what I call 87 and a half cent dollars in those corps. Personally, you, again, I like talking in concept. So you have, I, I look at every person as a taxable entity, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and, and there's four tax brackets, 20%, 30%, 40%, 40%, 40%, and 50%, okay? 20% is between zero and $50,000 of income. Uh, so that's 20%. Uh, the next bracket is 30%, between 50 and 100,000. Next bracket is 40%, between 100 and 150. And uh, the 50% tax bracket basically kicks in at, over, at 150 and over. So we're gonna show, we're, I, I got a small little uh, PowerPoint that we're gonna talk a little more about that. But okay. we'll bring that up from shortly. a taxable entity point of view, we have person and corporation. So if we okay. earn excess income, we keep it in the corporation. So that's interesting. So uh, number one, you're saying there's no rule of thumb that says if you make X dollars, you should incorporate. It's a question of how much do you need to live on, to Correct. pay yourself, yeah. for to, ha to cover personal expenses. Yeah. But there's a timing issue, isn't there? Um, December 31st, is that, does that have, if people say, should I, should I do it now or should I wait? Well, for those that it applies to, uh, again, from January 1 to, uh, to now, mm -hmm. all you realtors out there will be filing as you always have, unincorporated, self-employed. Uh, for any of your deals that are closing, we're allowed to channel that income through a corporation. So any, if, if, if it makes sense for you to incorporate, the sooner you do it, the sooner you can channel any income uh, into that corp and not on your personal tax uh, return. So first question is, does it make sense? Uh, and if it does, there's really no point in delaying it because any delay just means the income that you are earning will end up on your personal tax uh, return, okay, so, not your corporate return. So, so. people can go ahead and incorporate now if it makes yep, sense for correct. them yep. they can talk they can we're going to talk more but they can also speak with you in more detail there's there's this, are, we already have some questions coming in um yeah but I've, they can incorporate and i'll just mention that you you have a special yep. that you're offering this month yeah correct um you want to just mention briefly what that yeah, is yeah we'll talk a little bit about that later but okay. it's basically i'm the, the, you know for the month of october any realtor that wants to incorporate i'll incorporate them for 500 dollars. that's my fee there's filing fees on top of that which right. we'll get into before the session closes but okay that offer is available for the month of october okay very good so um i don't know if we covered this the what uh somebody's asked what are the criteria for me to incorporate i think we've, we've pretty much talked about that right we've said if you need more than you yeah so i mean the the answer is like we certainly want to look at your income and uh but again, the real, the main criteria is whether you earn more than you need to live on. Now, we have expenses in our lives, okay? We have business expenses and personal expenses. Uh, the corporation can pay for all of our business expenses. So for example, I'll just kind of use an extreme example. Uh, you have a car. And if you said my car is 100% business, we can have the corporation pay 100% of your car. You don't need to take out any money personally. So the corporation pays all the business expenses. I'm not saying everybody deduct their car 100%, please. I'm just using that as an example. Okay. Uh, but all I'm saying is the corporation can pay all your non-personal expenses. I have many clients that are filthy rich, okay? But we all the income is in the corp. We pull out up to 50,000 bucks. I want all my clients paying tax at the lowest tax, the, the lowest personal tax rate. Mm -hmm. And it's not hard to do, okay? When you really figure out all my expenses and go, well, these are personal, so I can keep them in a corp, 
this is all I need personally. Most people do not need a lot of personal expense. Okay, we need, we need to eat, we need a car, we need a house. Okay, all those expenses, all those three necessities have a business component to it. So we can deduct part of our food in our court. We can deduct part of our house in our court. We can deduct part or all of our car in our court. So we don't need to take a lot of money out personally. And, and the, the, the more we can keep in the corp, we're paying 12.5%. We're retaining 87.5 cents. It's a great thing. So when the question is what criteria, uh, you know, that's a pretty general comment I just made. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes sense to dig into each individual right. scenario and, and get a little more detail. So I'm kind of talking in general terms. Very, yeah, high level. So people can call you to discuss yeah, their situation, of course, yeah, and we'll, we'll provide your contact information on the screen shortly. A uh, question from Moyin. Yes. He says, can the current year income be brought into a corporation to be registered? Okay, so the way I understand it and the way we've got some clarity is if you have a deal in progress that is not yet closed, uh, it's my understanding that we can, when that deal closes, that income can go into your new corp. Okay, so we can't go back on anything that you've been paid already. We can't transfer that into a corp. Uh, any income that you receive from the date of incorporation that you incorporate uh, can be channeled through the corp. How long does it take to set up a corporation? Uh, we can do it instantly. We can do, you know, if you pay extra, you get a uh, rush, uh, rush incorporation, okay. not me extra, just right. the uh, service company. Normally it'll take uh, a week, but we can do it in two hours. Okay. So it can happen quick, but first we have to incorporate. And then there's some requirements by the real estate governing body that we have to do. We have to provide them information about the directors, the shareholders. So there's a couple of other steps that the real estate industry has thrown at us in order to okay. qualify for a, I guess they're, well, not guess they're called personal real estate corps, right. uh, PREX for short. Right. And right. I really <laughs> wish they would change that name because I feel like I'm swearing at everybody every time I say that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. These, um, these are PREX that we are talking about. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Um, okay. So we have a question from Mary. Uh, Mary says, I already have a corporation, which is a consulting company. Can I use that company? It is not currently active. Yes. As long as, so the requirements by the real estate industry are that in, in order to qualify for a PREC, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, it has to be 100% owned by the real estate agent, owned as far as the common shares. Mm -hmm. So 100% ownership. When we incorporate, and we're going to talk about this, we set up share, share structures. We set up common shares, preferred shares, and special, I, I use special shares, which I'll talk about. But to qualify for a personal real estate corp, the real estate agent has to own 100% of the voting shares. So you can use your existing company. If you have a company and you own 100% of the shares, we can turn that into a PREC. Okay, gotcha. Um, all right, we have um, other questions. Uh, do we want to talk uh, uh, about that one that Marilyn was uh, brought up at the beginning? Um, discussion on the CPA PPDL. Yeah, so um, uh, yeah, we can chat about that. So uh, it was going to come on later on in our discussion, but I'll talk about it now. The Income Tax Act, um, there, there's a section of the Income Tax Act that, that, that covers what we call personal service corps. Okay, mm -hmm. and what a personal service corp, without getting too detailed about it, in simple terms, is a corporation where 100% of your income it comes from one source. Mm -hmm. And it's really to cover what we call incorporated employees. Those are two very technical terms. Okay, so if you are an incorporated employee and all your income comes from one source, we have a problem. And the problem is it can be considered a personal service corp by CRA, which means you do not get the small business rate and you cannot deduct all these expenses that we're talking about. Big problem. Okay. But again, it was, uh, it, it, it's for incorporated employees, employees being the key word. Real estate agents are not employees. They are self-employed. 
Okay, so that's the big difference. Now, this was a case, uh, real estate agents in BC have been able to incorporate for many years. CRA went after them, challenged it, went to court, uh, the real estate agent won. Okay, so there's precedent. Okay, so we're gonna do a little deeper dive into all that, but one concern I always have is when CRA loses in court, mm -hmm. they go and change the Income Tax Act. Right, so the fight so that's a concern. Over. So this is a concern. Uh, people should be aware of it, but at this point we have uh, case law to support our position that this should not be a personal service corp. And again, real estate agents are not employees. They are self-employed. So the fact that they're not employees really means they shouldn't have anything to do. You know, there should be no concerns about this. So there should be corp. no concerns, should but there is no a concern. potential risk and there's a way to yeah, so, so this, in my opinion, yes. this is like the perfect time for a real estate agent to rethink their business model. Okay, and by that I mean, I mean, your bread and butter will always be buying and selling houses. But you should try to get some extra business activities going into that court. That is my recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, not only just to satisfy CRA, but just... I've always been somebody that looks at real estate agents and go, wow, what a, what a, you know, what a great opportunity agents have. They're real estate experts. Uh, we look at real estate agents as experts. Uh, we use them to buy and sell homes. Uh, why stop there? Why are you, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm somebody who advocates that real estate agents should add an investment component to their business. So models. you're saying they could, they could sell or offer uh, investments and have a Absolutely, revenue okay. because real estate agents are the experts. Okay? okay. So to me, and plus real estate agents, my God, you know, you have great systems. You're, you're well-trained. Uh, you have that system in place. Uh, you have the luxury of, you know, somebody calls you to buy or sell a house. You've got one, two, three, four months to build that strong relationship with that person. Uh, and, and you're talking to them about real estate and you build trust. And we all know that the value is in the relationship with the client. So there you've spent three months, four months with a client buying or selling a house for them. And then you've built up a good relationship. You've built up trust. The house is purchased or sold and they go see in 20 years. It makes no sense. You should use that trust that you've built up. And People look at real estate agents. Why are they just looking at real estate agents to buy or sell a house? Why don't they look at a real estate agent to go, oh, you're a real estate expert. You should help me with my real estate investments. Okay, just like makes sense. Potentially so. other passive real estate. And I know you have a solution as it happens. You have a solution for that, which we're gonna talk about, but let's, let's just back up a little bit. Okay, and let's just talk a little first. Let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about the corporation because there are a few other yeah, questions. Yeah. What else can the corporation be used? I mean, what about your own investments? Well, yes, absolutely. To so, start. So, so again, for those real estate agents that are, you know, are, 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 are making decent money and above, uh, you're going to keep more of it. You're only going to need to send 12.5% instead of, again, our personal tax rates, as I mentioned before, 20, 30, 40, and 50%. So now you can pay 12.5% and retain more of that money and use your uh, corporation now as, as a retire as as a retirement funding vehicle. I mean, I in in, in my business, uh, I I I I'll say it right now. I do not like RSPs. Okay, and I always say your corporation can do much better for you in lieu of an RSP. Uh, to me, you should build up all your money in a corporation, and that that you can use as your RSP later on in life. So there's lots we can do. There's many different things that we can use. And we have many more tools now with a corporation. This is something I think you've been advocating yeah. even before the personal real estate corporation was allowed. Mm -hmm. uh, businesses, people using their corporations, the money they have in their corporation to invest. 100%. Okay. 100%. All right. 100%. So we're, we're going to talk a little soon. We're going to talk a little bit more about investments, but uh, there's, there's other questions. What, where do you want to go next, Jerry? Well, I have a, I, I, you know, I don't, I, as I say, I want to really focus tonight on just a chat and a Q and a, but yes. I do have a little PowerPoint presentation. I'm okay. going to take our viewers on a 
tax okay. 101 journey. Okay, let's do a tax 101. Um, okay. And then we're going to come back and answer some more questions because there's a number of questions that are uh, coming in. We're going to do a little share screen here. Uh, and there we are. We have there you go. The okay. Presentation. So okay. Presentation. Taxation 101. Now this is uh, we're going to talk about how you uh, the real estate agents are currently taxed. Okay, because actually, if you can, uh, and then we're going to talk about how the, uh, the your new corp. So this is how you are taxed now. Okay, you are a unincorporated business. Okay. Uh, very simple concepts. You earn sales, you deduct your expenses, you have net income. And again, those are technical terms in the Income Tax Act. So far, CRA, because again, you earn sales expenses, net income, the net income number goes on to your personal tax, tax return. So far, CRA does not care what you do with your money. So I've had many not only real estate, self-employed people. Okay, I have an unincorporated business. How do I pay myself? Okay, CRA doesn't care. You just pull money out as you need it because they're taxing you on your net income. Okay, sales minus expenses equals net income. That's going to your personal tax return. We're going to apply the 20, 30, 40, 50% tax rate. You've paid your taxes. What you do with the rest of the money, CRA does not care. Okay, again, very important that uh, the business is you. So now if you click to the next slide, I kind of show that the business and the taxpayer, okay, again, I've, sales minus expenses equals net income. It goes on to the, the I, I look at a person as a taxable entity, as I mentioned before, click the next slide and there you go. So you're, you are, the person is a taxable entity, 20, 30, 40, 50% categories, zero to 50,000, the person is paying 20%. On the next, okay, 50,000, you're gonna pay 30%. On the next 50,000, you're gonna pay 40%. On anything over and above that, you're gonna pay 50, 50%, okay? Uh, but your business is you, so you're one, okay? In the eyes of the law and in the eyes of tax, there is no separation, okay? So if you click on the next screen, we put a little umbrella over that to show that you got your business and you are one. Now we talk about a corporation, so click another one. So there you go. So now what we've done is we put a corporation in between you and your business. Okay, so the corporation becomes a conduit. We can filter our income through that corporation and then it's gonna hit your personal tax return. But we can control that. We can make decisions, we can decide things, okay? So that filter, the corporation, as you can see there, pays 12.5%. So for all you real estate agents that are used to, you know, just sales minus expenses equals net income, and if you're a good producer, that income number is a high number, you're putting it on your tax return. I'm, I've done so many real estate agent tax returns that it, it's kind of sad that there's nothing I can do. I put the number on the tax return, it calculates how much tax is owed, and we both cry for a while and the real mm -hmm. estate sends the tax check in. If you click on the next slide, so here we show, so the filter we're using, the conduit is a corporation, okay? So we pay our 12 and a half corporate tax and we retain, okay, 87 and a half. So in my world, we look at corporations that were earning 87 cent dollars, 87 and a half cent dollars. Okay, that's a lot better than paying 50% to the government and earning 50% dollars. So that's a very powerful structure uh, that is now available to all these real estate agents. So click, click on the next one. So these little dollar signs mean we can control that. We can make decisions. How much money do we want to keep in the corporation? How much do we want to pay 12.5%? How much retained earnings do we want to retain? How much do we want to get uh, out of the corp onto the personal tax return. As mentioned, I have many clients that are extremely wealthy and we bring them out at the 20% personal tax rate. Okay, mm -hmm. that's your right. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. you're allowed, you know, the, it's the system we live in. You just got to be creative. So uh, real estate agents have been given a, a fantastic tool to now provide that service. But <clears throat> when we, excuse me, when we look at this slide, we go back to the question you asked, when should we incorporate? Okay, you can see right here, the personal tax, the lowest personal tax rate is 20%. 
the corporate tax rate is 12 and a half. That's seven and a half percent difference. Okay, so even on fifty thousand dollars, seven and a half percent is how much? <laughs> thirty-seven fifty. There you go, thirty-seven <laughs> fifty. Good one. Program. That's good. <laughs> okay, so right there, even if your net income was fifty thousand dollars, you're saving thirty-seven fifty. Okay, now, anytime we look at these types of numbers, with anything, certainly in the investment world, you know, there's a cost-benefit analysis. This is the benefit. What is the what is the downside? What is the cost? Okay, so in the example we just said, somebody makes fifty thousand dollars net sales minus expenses equals fifty thousand uh, dollars. We're saving thirty five hundred in taxes. Okay, mm -hmm. now if the cost to incorporate, the cost of incorporating is a one time cost. Then you got to pay to file your corporate tax returns every year. And let's just use two thousand dollars as an example. If you save thirty-seven fifty, it costs you two thousand every year to file a corporate tax return. You're still up, mm -hmm. right? It still might not be enough to incentivize somebody to go. Well, you know, if I'm only saving seventeen hundred dollars, I'm not even going to bother, right? And that's their their choice. But the other beauty of a corporation is we uh, there's different ways that we can take money out. Okay, so for example. Uh, there's a thing called dividends. So basically, uh, on, on, in a corporation, without getting too complicated, let's just, there, there's two ways to take money out. Okay, you can take it out as a salary, okay, which means it's deductible to the corporation. Mm -hmm. So when we go sales minus expenses equals net income, if we want to pay ourselves a salary, we get to further reduce that corporate income. So if we wanted to give ourselves a $50,000 salary, pay our 20% personally, we can reduce our corporate tax, okay, further. That's one way. And again, I don't wanna overcomplicate things. The second way is we can pay ourselves a dividend, okay? We've all heard of dividends, uh, probably needs a further explanation of a dividend. A dividend comes out of the retained earnings of the corp. Okay, so remember what we said, a corporation's gonna pay their 12.5% and keep 87.5% retained in the corporation. Right. When we pay somebody a dividend, it comes out of retained earnings. It's already, ta it's already been tax paid at 12.5%. So the tax system acknowledges that and gives you a dividend tax credit. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what a dividend tax credit is. It acknowledges that the corporation has already paid 12 and a half percent. You get to take the money out of the retained earnings. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not a deduction to the business if we do it out of the retained earnings. Whereas before, when we talked about a management salary, it is deductible to the corp and you're going to pay full tax. A dividend comes out of the retained earnings, not deductible by the corp, but you get a dividend tax credit. Now, Back to our example of $50,000, okay? You can basically take $50,000 out of a corp as a dividend and pay zero tax, personally, none, none at all, mm -hmm. okay? You take the dividend, you put it on your personal tax return, that 20% gets reduced by the dividend tax credit. I don't wanna get into all the complexities of it, but you can literally take 50,000 bucks as a dividend. It's actually like 44, I'm talking in concept. You can take out 50 grand as a dividend, pay zero income tax. So now back to that example of the person, well, I only made $50,000, sales minus expenses equals $50,000. Now you can pay the 12 and percent in the corp, take it out as a dividend and pay zero tax. Mm -hmm. Now that's pretty cool. That's very cool. Right. And the obvious question is, what's the downside? What's the downside? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> There's two negatives to doing that. Okay. One, when you take money out as a dividend, you are not building up your RSP room. Okay. okay. When you get a T4 or a salary, like we spoke about before, it increases your ability to put money into an RSP. Okay. If you take a dividend, it does not increase your ability to contribute to an RSP. In my world, I don't like RSPs, so I don't care, okay? Uh, I'll take a dividend any, so many of my clients, we do exactly that. We give them $50,000 dividends, they pay zero personal tax, and all their, all their income is taxed at 12 and a half percent. 
So that's the one negative for those people who do like RSPs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Back up there, buddy. <laughs> I did. Where do you want to be? One Back more. still there, here? There, well. Okay, I'm jumping <laughs> ahead. Um, now you lost me. I lost my train. Well, I thought I put your contact not... information. No, so nobody can... wants to know. No, nobody wants that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, I'll keep going. Um, so dividend, the one negative is you cannot contribute to an RSP. Okay. In my world, I don't care. And that's a whole other discussion. The second thing is you do not pay Canada pension when mm -hmm. you take money out as a dividend. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when you take it out as a salary, you're going to pay the Canada pension, but you have to pay it. Mm -hmm. So not only are you paying income tax, you're going to pay Canada pension. With a dividend, there's no Canada pension. So that's a topic of discussion. There's people who say, I don't, you know, I'd rather not contribute to Canada pension. I'd rather create my own pension. Okay. I'm one of those people. Right. Okay. I'd rather not mm -hmm. pay Canada pension. I'd rather create my own pension. Uh, so that's the other, you know, that's the second thing is that you're not contributing to Canada pension, but at least you don't have to pay it out of your own pocket. Okay. Okay. So those are the two, I guess, negatives. I don't call them negatives. I call them almost positives because the money does not come out of your pocket. So a typical structure for somebody to uh, filter their income through a corporation, pay themselves a $50,000 dividend each year to cover their personal expenses is a very, very common structure that makes a lot of tax sense. Now you can move the slide. Okay. Okay, so now we're going up to now, we're talking sideways, now we're going upside down. This is the way I normally discuss with people uh, when we talk about corpse, okay? So we have the person owning the corporation below the tax line, okay? Everything we've talked about so far still remains the same. Below the tax line, we, make we earn 87 and a half cent dollars we pay our 12 and a half percent once that money crosses the tax line we have to deal with our tax brackets and we take it from the corp through the tax line in the two ways that i've already discussed there's more ways but we're not going to get into the convoluted we're just going to keep it simple employment income or dividends Exactly. Okay. Salary, employment income, right. bonus, management fee, it's all kind of get groups into the same thing. It's we cross the tax line. Okay. Right. We're either either one of two ways. We either cross it and make a deduction for the corp and pay tax personally, or we take it out of retained earnings and pull it over the tax line by way of dividends. Okay. Uh, hit the next line. So uh, this is a very typical structure that I deal with with a lot of people, not so much real estate, while well, real estate agent have been able to incorporate. So, but a typical structure would be to earn the income in the corporation. Uh, and if this corporation is successful, we don't really wanna keep the money there because we've incorporated from a legal point of view to protect our assets. So if we mm -hmm. have a whole bunch of assets in the operating company, we wanna get them out. We send them up to a holding company uh, and that's where all our money grows. And in my world, that holding company becomes a much better saving vehicle than your traditional RSP. Okay, so, so this is interesting. And somebody was actually asking earlier um, about a holding company. So t tell us more about this. So now you're introducing. So this is a second company. company. So I'm mm -hmm. not, don't, don't get the wrong message. I'm not saying to everybody out there, go and set up a holding company okay. because technically your uh, personal real estate corporation can be your holding company. Okay. Okay. You're the real estate agent. Okay. Uh, you, you, your income goes into the corp. Uh, again, we incorporate for legal and tax reasons. Uh, tax we're talking about from a legal perspective, if there's a problem, if somebody is suing you, they're suing you personally, there's really no need for them to sue your personal real estate corp. You have insurance, your brokerage is, you know, going to go to bat uh, for for you, you're gonna fight fight it out in court, mm -hmm. uh, but really they're not gonna be going after your personal uh, real estate court. So it, with, with real estate agents, it's very easy to use the personal real estate. I keep saying that, I don't, I don't like <laughs> your PRAC. You, you, you can use your PRAC uh, as your holding company. So uh, once again, it's a, so you, real estate agents probably don't need a holding company. Uh, there are, certain situations where they would, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole okay. at this point, but for our discussion tonight, you can certainly use your PREC as your holding company and you mm -hmm. should. 
Okay. There's so many investment opportunities. Again, a great time to expand your business model. My God, I, I can't reiterate that enough because I'm a real advocate that real estate agents should expand their uh, business uh, models. So, okay, well, I definitely want want to get into that, but I'm just wondering if um, before we get into Not that, if we click. should Not see if there are some more uh, questions. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of ends our tax 101 okay. PowerPoint presentation. So, uh, so there's let's, Jerry's let's contact the... information. Snap a photo of that if you want to call Jerry so that uh, uh, you've and got And that's actually my investment company below, the Canadian Investment Service. That's my investment company. Canadian, that... Yeah, so we're, we're going to get into that shortly to see how investments fit into what you're doing, Jerry, yeah. and what I'm doing as well yeah. okay. uh, in private equity. And we're going to get into that momentarily. Again, snap a photo there, people, if you want to talk to Jerry. Uh, further there you have is uh, all his contact information. Okay. So, so, yeah. so yeah. where do you want to go from here? Cause I've all got right. a couple of general comments just since we're at this point, just okay. some general comments about corporations and then we can kind of, okay. So go um, ahead and then um, we're going to um, look throughout. at some questions. Okay. So just kind of to summarize why incorporate legal taxes are the two main reasons. And there's a third reason. Okay. Which I'm not going to talk about now, but I will talk about before we end this session and it relates to audits. So please remind me to talk about the third reason. Uh, what dollar level do you need to incorporate? We've talked about that, no dollar level. It only makes, uh, it, it just, it, it depends if you make more money than you need to live on. Uh, when we see corporations, we see extensions on the corporations, LTD, Limited, Inc, Incorporated, Corporation, Company, we see all these extensions. All those things mean the same. There's no difference. So when mm -hmm. you see something says limited or LTD or Inc or corporation or incorporated, it's all the same. Basically, the person that's creating the company gets to decide. So if you have a business name, if you wanted to incorporate Rockier Mortgage, you get to just decide if you wanted LTD, limited in full, INC, incorporated company or corporation. So doesn't make no it difference. doesn't matter. Okay. You can incorporate by name or number. So when we actually incorporate, we can do it. We can do a numbered company or we can name the corporation. Okay. Uh, structuring a corporation. When we incorporate, we create share classes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when I incorporate a company, uh, we have to create common shares. So we, 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 uh, we authorize, we create what's called an authorization of shares. Uh, I will create common shares, class A, B, and C. Uh, for the real estate agents, we'll just use a class A because only the realtor can be the uh, owner of that company. So we'll just issue them common A shares. Uh, I would authorize B and C just in case in the future they relax those rules and you can actually have other voting shares. Also for realtors, I will create special shares. Okay, so I will create special share A, B, C, D. And all that really means if you own, if we issue, uh, so there's authorized shares. And then when we actually uh, incorporate and, and, and create the company, we issue a share. If we issue a share, a special share, that just means we can give that person a dividend if we want. They have no voting control. They have no right, you know, they have no input into the business. They just own a share that we can issue a dividend because a dividend can only be paid to a shareholder. Okay. You have to own a share to get a dividend. So that's why we create these special shares. So if we want to pay a spouse, if we want to pay a child, okay, uh, at least they own the share that we can pay. Okay. The, the I think we need. To, I think we need to move on. Yeah, carry on. Okay. Carry on. There's a, a comment. Uh, Moyin says uh, Rico restrictions that real estate agents cannot offer expertise in other areas. And then let's and then let's talk about that. How do we how do we deal with this, Jerry? Your um, Canadian Investment Services is your company. Correct. And um, I know you, you you started this company because you had a, you have a passion for real estate investments. It's something you you wanted to bring to your clients. I have a passion to bring real estate investments to the clients in the proper way. Right. So how do we do that? And how can real estate agents deal with this uh, RICO? Uh, apparently, there's a RICO restriction. Uh, is this a new, I, I, if this is a new restriction, then I, I'm not aware of it. So if this is brand new, I'm not aware of it. Okay. But you can also earn, um, you can also earn, I don't, I don't know if it's new or not. Uh, Moeen, if you know, if it's new. Yeah. If somebody you can, can comment, I mean, if we, if somebody um, can comment, I mean, let, let me explain my understanding and please correct, correct me if I'm wrong. 
uh, as a real estate agent. So these new rules basically say you can create a personal real estate corp. Uh, the real estate agent has to own 100% of the voting shares. But inside that corp, you can do other things. Okay, I know that for a fact. There's no restriction. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say there's no restrictions. I'm not aware that that corp okay. can't uh, provide other services. Now, I do know that you can't use your personal real estate corp to say you buy and sell. You're not allowed to use your business name to market yourself as a real estate agent. Okay. Okay. So that's, right. You know, okay. so they basically, they don't want the public to think that your personal real estate corp is engaging in the buying and selling of real estate. I don't really quite understand why okay. they're wording it that way, but do right. we have anybody chiming well, in? Hassan chime in on that? says only a restriction for financial industry, but that's only a few areas in financial industry. I'm okay. I'll, I'm not aware that a real estate agent cannot uh, offer investment services. I mean, the minute you talk to a client about buying a triplex, mm -hmm. Are you not giving them investment information, investment services? If you say, hey, client, I got a great triplex for you here. Are right. you buying, are you selling a house or buying a house or are you providing investment advice? Right. right. Somebody please. Okay, well, um, I know that in um, in uh, private equity world, as, as, as you know, Jerry, as some people may know, I'm also a licensed dealing representative and we're allowed to uh, pay referral fees or finders fees to people. Yeah. And um, the, the way that a referral is given has to be follow certain guidelines. Yeah, You're correct. not supposed to be giving financial advice to people and advice on investments. Same thing goes for mortgages. Um, we're allowed to pay people uh, a finder's fee or referral fees for somebody who introduces us for a mortgage. But that person who gives the referral there's a proper way to do it and they should not be giving mortgage advice the same way. So I, I don't, um, I don't know how Rico would, I'm, would I'm, look on that. I'm but... chomping at the bit to, <laughs> to jump in. Go ahead, please. Okay. So yeah. for those of you that don't know me, my company, okay. I know, I'm not saying this to be boastful. I'm saying it to lend credibility. I'm the only person in Canada that is a CPA that has been licensed in all five licensed industries which are MFDA, which is mutual, mutual funds, IROC, which is stocks and bonds, private equity, okay, which is private, which is the exempt market dealer, mortgage and insurance. I've been licensed, governed in all those industries. So when I created my Canadian investment service, I gave up all my licenses by choice, okay? So I do not have an investment license. I cannot facilitate an investment order. I can give information and education to people, and I can't see why real estate agents can't do the same. I cannot process an order. So when I talk to a client about real estate, hey client, what about this tri triplex? We can buy that. Not everybody wants to own a triplex. Mm -hmm. uh, as you are well aware, real estate income trusts are, are, are an absolute gem of a real estate investment that you own as a group. I don't wanna get a deep dive into that, but I have a lot of clients that invest in real estate income trusts. Uh, I can give them education. I can give them information about real estate income trusts. I cannot process the order. When I need to process the order, I call my good friend, David, who is a private equity licensed rep. So when the time comes to process the order, I have to go to a licensed rep, but I can give them information and education all, all day long. And, and that's the whole premise of my business model is to make sure clients get the right education, the right information to make their decisions. I can't see why real estate agents can't do that either. No real estate agents cannot process an order for a real estate income trust. But why can't you explain to your clients the benefits of real estate, your real estate specialist, if they don't wanna own their own rental property, the next best thing is to uh, buy a, a, a real estate income trust and own real estate as a group. And at that point, yes, we would have to pull in a licensed rep to process the order, to do the suitability and everything else. So I really would challenge, uh, you know, if, if, if people are out there saying real estate agents can't do this. 
Okay, and um, Sandy agrees. She's saying, um, yeah, you cannot give, that's right, you cannot give expert advice, um, uh, but, um, but you can help clients um, is, is send them to the, to the appropriate uh, people Correct. for advice. And, right. and what we're also saying yeah. is that um, in order to, let's say, to a degree, insulate yourself from the potential risk that I think it was Marilyn, uh, if I'm not mistaken, who brought up at the very beginning, that if your uh, income comes from a single source, yes, um, you could put, you know, uh, that Personal CRA could Personal eventually um, backtrack on this whole thing yeah. and, and uh, you know, and then, and then, hey, what's find to a way say, to close this loophole? You know, the other concern is another CRA auditor could come and audit a real estate agent and say, I think that you're a personal service club and let's go to court. And of course, we're going to say, well, there was some precedent there. So, but what if there's some circumstances that are different? Now our fate is in the hand of another judge that says, yeah, you know what, real estate agent, you are a personal service corp. Well, that's going to set precedent <laughs> for all 100,000 agents, uh, however many there are in Ontario, I think there's that many. So, you know, it is a concern. Right. Um, not enough to not incorporate if it makes sense, but it is enough of a concern to go, geez, you know, maybe I should think about my business model. Now is a perfect time. Okay. Again, uh, you, I can't see why a real estate, you're real estate experts. Why can't you educate and give information to people? Uh, you cross right. the and, line and, and or introduce or introduce to, to people who can help them Absolutely. and then earn a, uh, a referral fee for and, and that's the, why I'm an advocate because and, and which would be disclosed, which would be disclosed, which would be disclosed. Absolutely. No, no, there is no, right. so, know, so no. this, and this is one of the reasons, Jerry, that I, um, you know, enjoy like working with you is because one of the important things, I mean, people, you know, people uh, love investing in real estate because they can see it, uh, they can touch it. Absolutely. Not everybody has the wherewithal to go out and, do, and you know, you real estate agents that are out there and you're working with uh, investors who are buying multiple properties, I mean, good on you, okay? That is, that is an awesome way to build your business, I think. Um, but uh, some people want to have passive real estate investments. And a very important part of that is knowing which investments are, are good and also knowing the tax implications and understanding how to set up these investments. And that's why I know your clients um, enjoy speaking to you about their investments and they appreciate the advice that you give them, Jerry, because you have that background and you're, you're a real estate investor yourself. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and a lot of your clients are, are real estate investors too. So Canadian investment services, I mean, um, t tell us a little bit about a little bit more about Canadian investment services, if you would, and how you work with professionals like mortgage brokers, real estate agents and others. Well, again, uh, you know, we provide investment information and, and education. Uh, I like real estate. Most of my, it's, it's not about what I like. It's about what the client likes. But myself, I'm a real estate investor. Real estate has done me great, just like most people, you know, who have invested in real estate. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the stock market. Okay, so when I start talking to clients about investments, I tell them my opinions about the market. Any investment decision that we make, uh, there's good and bad. I'm always somebody that likes to spend as much time talking about what might happen in a negative way to the investment, as well as as much time talking about the positive. That just gives the client the information they need. Uh, I'm proud to say, you know, my business model is making sure the client is invested in what they want to be invested in, not just something I'm trying to sell them. Okay, so I give them the information, they figure it all out. Yes, I like this. Okay, so when we find out what this is, we go find the licensed person who can process the order for them. Right. Uh, and in my opinion, it's a much better method. Okay, again, I've been licensed in all these industries. And the one thing that drove me really nuts, okay, is we put the, the, the investment, the licensed investment industry puts the product ahead of the financial planning process. Okay, and what I mean by that is, uh, who can I pick on? I'll pick on investors group for no other reason than I'm just picking on them. If you go to an investors group, say a rep, they're going to 
they're, they're an MFDA licensed firm. They're going to sell you mutual funds, whether you want them or not. And they're going to take the product, mutual funds, and apply it to your financial planning process. Okay, to me, that is completely backwards. Okay, we should put the financial planning process first. What do you got? Right. Where are you trying to go? What are you trying to get? Then we look at what products you want to use in your plan. And we're not restricted to any product. So if you like real estate, once again, I mentioned real estate income trust. I mean, two things that of all the things that we do at Canadian Investment Services, the two things that stand on top as far as investment choices are real estate, the proper real estate income trust. That's a whole other topic. Okay. There's, in my opinion, good and bad, but you buy a real estate income trust. I'm sure you're all aware. It's just a, a fund of apartment buildings. And if those apartment buildings are within a two hour radius of the GTA, which I like and are moderately priced, you know, so it's just, you know, you basically medium priced rents, uh, the vacancies are next to nothing. You're going to get a nice 10, 12% return secured by real estate. So real estate income trusts are right in the top of the list. Private mortgage lending. We do a ton of private mortgage lending. Okay, okay. so I'm going to mention again that you have a special for the month of yes. October. Yes, yes, uh, yes. And um, so tell us about that again. Okay, Please. so uh, and then you, we'll get to answer some more yeah, questions. If you want to I, incorporate, uh, mm -hmm. I will incorporate you. My fee is five hundred dollars. There are filing fees on top of that uh, that I have nothing to do with. We have to pay the government three hundred and seventy nine dollars. We have to pay the service ninety nine dollars. We have to do initial notice. We have to do a name search, uh, which will probably don't quote probably add another five or six hundred to the fee. So add my fee on top of that. So you're incorporating for 11 or $1,200 total with all the fees that you would have to pay. Uh, so that's my show special. Uh, I'll do that. And, for, what is, for and that includes, that includes a discussion, a consult. Like oh, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah, about. no, yeah, absolutely. So it includes a, cons uh, you know, a consultation. We'll talk about it. We'll figure out if it's worth it for you. If it, right. If, if it, it makes if, sense if, for if you. If it's the right, the right, right choice. Now for that fee, I want to be very clear. You're not getting those nice minute books and nice things that you get from a lawyer. Okay, I'm going to process the paperwork that you need in order to be a corporation to in order to file everything we need with. Do people with, need to speak to a lawyer? Home. There was a question about that. Uh, technically, no, but you know, a lawyer, you know, there's, it's not wrong to go to a lawyer. Uh, you don't need a lawyer to incorporate. I'm not saying don't go to a lawyer to incorporate. You can incorporate yourself. Okay, you can do it yourself. You can pay those five, those six hundred dollars of filing fees and do it yourself. You can pay somebody like me five hundred bucks to file all that stuff and get your incorporation done. Uh, you're going to get the basic incorporation package. You can pay a lawyer. They're, they can incorporate you. They'll probably charge a little more, but they're going to give you the really nice package and everything else. You don't need that stuff. Right. Uh, and, so. and if they talk to you, they're also going to get that advice on whether they should incorporate and how they can structure things. Yeah, I mean, if you go to a lawyer, they're, they're just going to incorporate you. Right, so you're going to uh, get the tax advice gonna, you need. We're going to get the tax advice. And, and uh, if people want to find out more about how they can add investment services, they, well, should, you know, they should talk to you about that well, too, one of the reasons that's a big why, opportunity. Yeah, one of the reasons why I've got into the investment world is, well, just because I like investments, number one, num but but the the investment industry investments and income tax are so intermingled and when i first got into the investment world I, I i was astonished and i'm still astonished how lack of tax knowledge is in the investment industry i mean mm -hmm. taxes is the biggest yeah. expense of your life i mean you should have a working knowledge, your investments should incorporate very like important. for example, real estate income trust. They have this return of capital. Some yeah. of you may know what I'm talking about, some of you may not, mm -hmm. but you don't pay any tax on the income that you generate from these REITs. I mean, yeah. you know, to sort of take the tax component into the investment strategy to me is paramount. And I just right. don't see it anymore. Well, it's tax deferred, right? Until you sell it. Add as capital gain, and you're only paying half, and you only half, pay half, half of the tax. So that's so, a great. Yeah. So I mean, um, there's just you know, yes. all I'm saying is, the tax conversation should happen in the investment conversation, and in most, with most licensed advisors, they just don't have a strong tax background. Right. A licensed financial advisor very seldom do I see a structure where we have a holding company. And, right. 
the holding company can buy an insurance policy and all this stuff. I mean, they're, they're, anyway, just my opinion. But yeah, well, I think it's uh, it's very valuable advice, and that people should call you about that. So now we've covered um, the main ground, and we've done so uh, pretty much within our hour. Now we're, let's get to some of the questions. Yes, please. We hope you'll stick with us, and feel free to add ask more questions. We'll we'll stay on. Um, for a bit longer, but um, we wanted to cover at least the basics, which we did. And uh, we will send out um, to, if you have registered, uh, if you haven't registered, you still can. And we will send out a video of a uh, replay of this. We so can, you can also watch send it again. the PowerPoint if they want. And we can send the PowerPoint. Absolutely. Okay. So let's look at some of the uh, questions. Um, would my brokerage make GCI from my a transaction to my corporation number. I'm not sure what Boy, I don't even understand the GCI. question. Sorry. Okay, if you're Chris, if you're uh, if you're um, gross commission, I don't know. If you're still with us, Chris, um, maybe you can clarify, please. Uh, type in the comments or we'll re-ask the question. Uh, Ian Clip, uh, what about the money that is sitting in the corporation investing that money? Absolutely, hundred percent. I mean, again, in my opinion, the your corporation becomes your investment vehicle. Right. Okay, so we can do all kinds of things in that court. Okay, right. And now, I know, I, which I, is something that you've you've advocated for a long time. 100%. You're not now a big I do fan want to uh, add to that comment. The 12.5% tax rate that we talk about is for income up to, is for active income. Active being a very important word active income up to $500,000. So sales minus expenses equals net income. In a corporation, uh, that net income up to 500,000, we pay 12 and a half percent for active income. Active income is you doing what you do. Okay, we also have passive income. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you buy a rental property, you create rental income inside of your corp, that's passive income. You're being taxed at 50, percent five zero on passive income okay and there's many strategies that we we do we try not to let anybody pay tax at 50 percent in their court but i guess the message i'm saying there's a difference between active income 12 and a half percent and passive income 50 percent we still can use these corporations as your investment vehicle. And there's many strategies that we can do to minimize that okay. impact of 50%. Okay, understood. Uh, question, uh, I'm a broker. Can I use the same corporation? Uh, so your broker, can you use the same corporation that you have to be I guess a personal? As a, as you know what? I do not know the answer to that. Okay. Sorry. All right. Good know. question, anonymous. Yeah. So Kennedy. we'll have to look into that. We will have to look into that one. Um, okay. Uh, how many? I, people I, I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna add what I think the answer is, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying mm -hmm. it's 100% right. I'm pretty sure that you can't. Okay. Okay. I think these personal real estate corps are for the agents that are licensed through a brokerage. Okay. Okay. I think. Not 100% sure, but that, okay. that's what I believe is the answer. Okay, fair enough. We can check on that. Um, how many people can we have in a corporation? Is there any limit? Uh, anything over 50, you become a public corp. So as far as voting share, so we want to make sure it's below 50. Uh, but we don't see that too often. Most of these corps, one, two, three, four, five, ten. But we can certainly... Uh, issue shares up to 50. Once we get up over 50, we have different rules that we have to play by. Again, when we issue shares, we have to be cognizant of what type of shares they're getting. Okay, if we give them voting shares, they're running our business. If we give them non-voting shares, they're not running our business. So a common share, a common share means you participate in the value of the business. So if you invest into a common share and the business quadruples, the value of your share has quad, quadrupled, okay? Because a common share means you own part of the business. Those common shares can either be voting, which means you have a say in the business, or they can be common non-voting, which means you don't have a say in the business, but your common non-voting share allows you to participate in the growth of the business. You can, again, as mentioned before, you can have preferred shares, voting or non-voting. Uh, I use special shares. 
you have different classes of shares. You can have common A, common B, common C, special A. The reason we use different classes of shares because it allows us to give different dividend amounts to whoever is holding those shares. If it was just common shares only, David, if you and I own 50 common shares each and they were the same common shares, uh, if I get a dividend, you have to get a dividend. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. if we have different classes and I can get a dividend of such an amount and you can get a dividend of a different amount. So okay. from a tax planning strategy, we usually break down the, uh, the, the classes of shares. On the T2, do you click the box CCPC and not PSB? Correct. Correct. CCPC, Canadian Controlled Private Corporation, those are the ones that qualify for the 12.5% tax rate up to $500,000. Okay. Do not right. click on PCB. Okay, very good. Um, many real estate agents can offer other services like property rentals, management, insurance, investment, sales, with a question mark on the end of it. Yeah, I still, I'm still not convinced that a real estate agent can't get into the real estate investment world. But I stand to be corrected. But I'm not aware of any restriction that you would have. I mean, you're doing, you know, you're managing rentals. You're the real. Lots of real estate agents do other stuff. Okay. And I mean, mm -hmm. it just makes so, so much sense. You, you, you have the systems in place. You, mm -hmm. you, 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 know, you, you, you build trust with people. Uh, again, the real estate in industry, I, I find very fascinating because they have marketing machines in order to get the sale. Right. But once that sale is done, that client is gone for 20 years. So the real estate agents, and, and again, most of them are very well trained to use their database, the machine is there. Why wouldn't you leverage what mm -hmm. you have? Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you send out a flyer to your network and go, hey, why don't you listen to Dave and Jerry talk right. about some real estate? Because we're going right. to send well, you a referral again, fee. Again, I think there's two, uh, there's two possibilities here. One is where you actually develop uh, expertise and become an investment advisor yourself, which is not especially what we're advocating here. I mean, if somebody wants to go down that road, um, that's one thing, but what we're saying here is that they can refer or introduce yep. their Thank clients you. to somebody who they believe yeah. to be trustworthy yeah. and earn uh, a, referral a, a referral fee. Yeah, and it's all disclosed. Should, should no, I, 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 I think the word that really comes into play in this discussion mm -hmm. is the word recommend. Right. Okay. Without a license, without an investment license, you really aren't supposed to recommend a product. Right. Okay. Yeah. You can talk about a product, you can provide education, you can provide information. Yeah. And minute, you can make an introduction. And you can make an introduction. Right. But the minute an unlicensed person says you should invest in this, right. there's a problem. Exactly. Okay. So you give them the information, you give them the education, you introduce them to the licensed person who's going to go through the whole suitability and whether this is an investment for this person or not. Okay. So it's understanding how the system works and working within it. Okay, very good um, question. Uh, so is there a percentage you recommend as per T2 jacket for other services other than sales? Oh, so I think somebody's talking. So on the T2, we identify what, um, what the corporation does and mm -hmm. we can break it down. We can put 10% management service, 90% real estate sales. Uh, and I mean, that's, that's more for information. Okay. So sorry, what's the actual, actual Is question? there a percentage that you recommend on, uh, as per the T2 jacket for other services other than sales? No, on the uh, T2 jacket, if I'm doing all these corporate tax returns, I'm putting uh, real estate sales a hundred percent. Okay. But if we're saying, if let's say you have, uh, unless I'm not understanding, but let's say uh, you're referring people to yeah. uh, Canadian investment services yeah. and you're earning finders fees, yeah, then there correct. would be a different category. wouldn't uh, there? If the amount was material. Okay. okay. So if you earn a hundred thousand dollars from real estate sales and you refer some business to me and I pay you $2,000, we don't need to do anything in that area that's being discussed there. We put real estate sales a, a, a hundred percent. Okay. Okay. It's more information for CRA. It doesn't really impact anything on the T2. The T2, by the way, for those that don't know, is the corporate tax return. Okay. 
Um, there's a couple of questions about dividend versus salary, but I think you you've already uh, you've do, already discussed do they, that. Do they have specific questions? No, just general. Is it better to pay salary versus dividend? I again, we've discussed. I'll just I'll just reiterate again. With a dividend, we get a dividend tax credit, which reflects the tax that has already been paid by the corp. So in theory, in general, the dividend comes across to the person cheaper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, right. In a general comment, you're getting right. paid by dividends cheaper. I have, but many, they don't. Many, many, they don't get this. They don't get the CPP, and they don't get the uh, RSP room. Correct. See, I was paying attention. Good for you. <laughs> okay, so that's important. Yes. Uh, and um, I have many clients, many, many, many clients who have holding companies with lots of money in it, operating companies, and we give the owners fifty thousand dollar dividends a year. That's it. Right. Okay. And that, that question, by the way, was from Ravi Thacker, his uh, not only a real estate agent, but he's also a mortgage agent on, uh, on my team. Awesome. So there you go. Thanks for that, uh, Ravi. Um, by taking out a dividend, does it affect your buying your house in the future as it doesn't show on your T4 as your income? So hard to get a mortgage if you want to buy personally. Why? Here we go. Okay, so I am. Oh my God. Okay, this here, here's the uh, here's the way I'm going to answer that. I'm somebody that believes, uh, you know, it's your right to reduce your taxes. Okay, uh, people need to realize the Income Tax Act, which we work with as accountants. Half of it is in black and white. Half of it is written in gray. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the black and white is black and white. Hey, you can put. 18% of your earned revenue from last year into an RSP. That stuff is black and white. The gray section of the tax act is, is, is up to interpretation. For example, you can deduct your car for business purpose. Yeah, but this person's no, asking no, about no, getting, getting a mortgage. There. I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> it's a long I'm time. a mortgage broker. I'm getting you know, there. I'm, I'm ready to jump. You're going to get your air time. You're going to get your air time. Relax, <laughs> everybody. Relax. Okay. So I'm just saying. Half of the Income Tax Act is written in gray, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm an aggressive accountant if the client wants me to be, okay? So when we go into that gray area, it's my job to educate the client, okay? This is what you can do. This is what you can do. This is the repercussions. This is CRA might not like this, but we're allowed to do it. I'm not going in there and doing anything illegal. I won't do anything illegal. But, uh, you know, if a client is aggressive, I'm there to help them now. The more aggressive we get, the further we reduce the income. Okay, your time's coming here, get, get ready. The more we reduce our income, when we take that tax return and go to a mortgage broker and go, David, get us a mortgage. Okay, Are you tell ready? us what happens when we're we gonna, bring you a tax return with my, very, very little income, in 10, 9, yeah. 8, 7, here's my, here's my moment in the sunshine. Jerry, as you know, I do a lot of uh, alternative lending and I work with a lot of self-employed people. And basically the lenders that we deal with, we work off the gross. So um, the main thing, the main question, whether your income is coming into a PREC or whether it's coming to you personally is what is your gross sales, your gross commissions. And for self-employed businesses, the same thing, uh, or business owners, We're, we start with the gross, you pay, an extra percentage point on your mortgage, but you can potentially save tens of thousands of dollars on your taxes. So from my point of view, as a mortgage broker, my comment is, is that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make any difference. If you're qualifying at a bank um, or trying to qualify at a bank, uh, it could make a difference, but um, consider, consider some of the alternatives for self-employed. Uh, and in keeping with Jerry, your, your point uh, earlier that if you don't need more than you, if, if there's, you can, you only need to pay yourself what you need to live on. Yep. Correct. Right. Beyond that, don't be paying yourself any more to make a positive impression on your bank manager because it could be costing you a lot of money. Well, I think, you know, it comes into, you know, that quite, that's a great question mm -hmm. and it comes into planning. You know, so we're going to, you know, hey, if we're going to try to get your income way down, maybe we should talk to you first, David, to go, okay, right. what did you know, is this good or bad or 
you know, so, um, you know, I love when you say, because I keep saying sales minus expenses equals net income. Okay. You just said you're basing your application or some of them on sales. When I talk about the income tax act, half gray, half black, I'm talking about expenses. Right. So it's good to know that you're dealing with the sales, even if we're taking those expenses and trying to, trying That's to, right. uh, we, to reduce them. We start, we work, we work from the gross and it helps you get the mortgage you need and um, oh actually and now now is a good time for me to yes, uh, talk about the third reason why you incorporate you were supposed okay. to yes. you're supposed to mention that that's so right two what reasons to incorporate audit. tax and liability and the third in my opinion is audit if you are an aggressive taxpayer if mm -hmm. you like the gray area of the tax act and we can go in there and try to reduce your income uh you don't you know we're always subject to an audit Okay, when we file a tax return, personal or corporate, we have three years that our tax return is open at CRA, mm -hmm. okay, and they can come in and inspect, okay. So the third reason, in my opinion, is your audit risk, okay. 300 people get audited for every one corporation. Mm, okay. Okay, yes. so mm -hmm. your audit risk in a corporation is much lower than it is on a personal so if we have a corporation and if you're the person is aggressive in the corporation and we do $50,000 dividend on the personal tax return and that's all we're doing on the personal tax return, that personal tax return isn't going to send up any audit lights at CRA. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so and again, 300 people get audited their personal tax returns compared to one corporation. Wow, that's okay. amazing. Yeah, so that's, that's huge. The, in my opinion, the third reason to consider. Okay, very good, uh, very good point. Okay, let's keep going. We have more questions. Yeah, Are you essentially looking at a corporate income as RRSP or DPSPs, but without the yearly maximum? They do pay 12.5% but have a much larger amount to save and invest. Interesting conceptual uh, viewpoint. Okay, here's why I don't like RSPs. And I shouldn't say I don't like them. Mm -hmm. uh, let me let me change my comment. They've, they've been misused too much, okay? It's a sales mechanism for banks, okay? So we go back to the 20, 30, 40, 50, okay? Mm -hmm. So an RSP is a deferral. Okay, there's real tax savings. So when we talk about saving taxes, we're talking real savings and deferred savings. Real savings are taxes we're saving and we'll never have to pay them. Okay. Okay. Uh, deferral means we're getting a tax break now and we're going to pay, pay later. Okay, mm -hmm. go back to the 20, 30, 40, 50 chart. When we put money into an RSP, we get a tax deduction. And when we take it out, we're paying tax. Okay, now if you're getting a, if you're going in at 20%, getting a 20% saving and you're coming out at 50%, does that mm -hmm. make sense? No. Yeah. If you're going in at 50%, getting a 50% savings on the RSP, and if we can come out at 20%, does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm yeah. not saying don't have RSPs. I'm saying make sure when you contribute to RSPs that we're getting a good break going in and we don't have to pay a lot going out. And that's right. just proper planning. The other problem with an RSP is I see all these people with all this money in the RSP. I'm going, mm -hmm. okay, that's great. Good for you. You know, uh, yeah, my advisor's been shoving this down my throat since I started making money. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. Now mm -hmm. you got a whole bunch of money. I'm somebody who's probably done through over 300 final estate tax returns. Okay, that RSP is a ticking time bomb mm. because when you die okay that rsp is taxable it can go to your surviving spouse tax free but the ticking time bomb just goes to the surviving spouse mm -hmm. when that rsp gets left to children or anybody other than a spouse the full amount goes on your tax return right so i have sat across from so many people when i say gee sorry about your mother your father uh, here's the final tax return they had three hundred thousand in their rsp for you and unfortunately we have to send 150 to cra yeah crazy right okay right that's just it's just bad planning right okay very okay. good point, so anyway Jerry. sorry yeah. i don't know if yeah. i answered yeah. that no, question it's, it's but good, uh, 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 good perspective. Thank you. Um, I don't know. Did did I answer that question? Uh, I don't know. I uh, I don't know. It, 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 <laughs> we should it make sure. It sounded good to me. We um, should make sure this. Sounded question. good. 
would my brokerage, oh, I think we, uh, would my brokerage make GCI from my transaction to my corporation number? Um, I don't know. Make GCI from my transaction. To yeah, my I don't know. You know, whoever's asking that question, uh, I'm glad to investigate further. I, I, I don't really know what your GCI number is. Sorry. That okay. Is. So I'm um, glad to investigate. Okay. Further. Yeah. I think again, yeah, I just want to be clear that, that that question does not relate to any real estate agent out there that is licensed by a brokerage. Everything we're talking about tonight relates to the real estate agent that is licensed by a brokerage. These questions are coming from the brokerage level right. um, that we have to do a little uh, more. Craig digging. says yes. Gross commission income ah, still gross, flows through the brokerage. Income. That's what. Uh, Craig says. Gross commission income, okay. Uh, probably Sorry, a K, so what, yeah, probably so, a KW agent thinking about profit share, he says. So the gross commission goes through the brokerage. Yeah, the I brokerage. would. Okay. But I don't, right. think, I don't think that becomes a personal. Of course, brokerages can incorporate. They always have. Okay. So their right. income goes through, but hold on. Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. So the brokerages have always been able to incorporate. Their income goes through a corporation, but I don't think the brokerage corp becomes a personal real estate corp, a PREC. I right. think the prep is just for that licensed agent that is licensed by the brokerage. Okay, very good. Um, nice comment from Yvonne. Love the information and show special thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, can two registered real estate agents like a husband and wife or father and son have one prep? Uh, the prep, no. The prep has to be owned by the uh, licensed real estate agent. It cannot be owned by two two different pe people. What's this? G what are you showing me here? I'm just. Oh, that's that's okay. Uh, okay. Um, can uh, we? Then we got that answered. Uh, what is the cost? What is the cost to file corporate tax? Uh, depends what goes on in your corporate tax return, but a, a real general estimate would be around 2000 bucks, probably. Okay, very good. Uh, if you wish to invest as a private equity in investor, would it be better to root it through a CCPC? Uh, it, okay, routing through the CCPC, which is the, the uh, PREC, which is a, a CCC, CCPC, Canadian Controlled Private Corporation, which is, a, which is the corporation that gets the 12.5% the, the, the tax rate, which is what the PREC is. So the PREC is a CCPC, just for, for clar clar clarification. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should we flow the purchase of a what, sorry? Private a equity Private investor. equity through the uh, corporation. It depends where the money comes from. If the money is in the corporation, we don't want to take the money out personally and make that investment personally. If the money is in the corporation, we want to make the investment in the corporation. If we own, if we have the money personally, uh, we we certainly could move that money into the corporation mm -hmm. and invest in the corporation. That's not a problem, but there's no point in having money in the corp, pulling it out personally to make that investment into the private equity. So it's not so much flowing it through, it's where's the money now? That's the okay. more important thing. And again, I should mention, if you give money to your corporation, you can pull it back out tax-free. Mm -hmm. That's a shareholder account. So if you had 50,000 personally, and if we wanted to make the investment in the corp, we can put 50,000 of our own money into the corp. You now have an IOU from the corp. The corp owes you back $50,000. You can pull out tax-free. Right. And now your money is in the corp. And if we decided it should be held in the corp, that's what we would do. But the other way around, taking the money out of the corp just to make an investment personally doesn't make a whole lot of sense if we're paying too much tax. Okay, um, we're gonna we're gonna do two more questions and then we're gonna wrap up. I'm gonna put Jerry's uh, and my contact information up one more time after that. GH will do. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, GH will do an in office session for real estate brokerages. So if you uh, um, are a broker or you have a team, um, feel free to um, introduce Jerry 
or contact him, he will come to, uh, well, or maybe Zoom nowadays, uh, depending on where you are and, and so on. Um, he's happy to do a, a further session for your office. Thank you. I didn't know what you were um, pointing at there, Jerry. <laughs> Just trying to get um, that message across. The um, uh, commission check should be direct deposit to my corporation, not my personal name, correct? Coming uh, from my brokerage? Assuming that you're incorporated, yes. Okay, correct. Right. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, make, sure, come, make, sorry, yeah. make sure your brokerage pays your personal real estate corp. Okay, very good. You, 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 we want the tax slip yes. in the name of the personal real estate corp. Okay, does your company handle accounting and bookkeeping as well? Uh, we do taxes. We can refer bookkeeping. Uh, speaking of bookkeeping, if you do become a tax client of ours, a corporate client, we give you uh, QuickBooks Online for free, the plus version, the, high, the highest version. So we have uh, those uh, software packages available for free. Uh, we don't really do the bookkeeping, but we have a network of bookkeepers who provides the bookkeeping. Bookkeeping and tax are two different services. We okay. do tax. All right, and the last question uh, is, um, if you're a real estate agent and a mortgage broker, you cannot include your mortgage income? No, 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 no. You can't put your mortgage income into a prep. Okay, got it. All right, well, um, that's it. I'm gonna put our uh, contact information on the screen uh, one more time if you uh, wanna get a hold of um, uh, Jerry or myself. Uh, there it is. Uh, feel free to call either one of us. And uh, great session. Thank that was you, really good. Uh, a lot of great questions, Jerry. Yeah, um, I, I think, think you did a very good job well, explaining it. I, uh, yeah. you know, I try to uh, demystify the uh, all these uh, issues that are coming I feel, up. I feel I very demystified. Demystified. Okay. Well, <laughs> I just in conclusion, again, uh, great opportunity for real estate agents. Uh, you know, certainly uh, worth exploring the uh, pros and cons of incorporating. I really don't know too many cons. I mean, um, you know, um, you know, it's funny. I look at real estate agents. I mean, there, you know, there's there's the top producers. They got their systems. They got their machines. They're making a ton of dough. They're going to benefit so much from this. Uh, you got the bottom that are selling one or two or three houses a year. It's kind of a part time gig. Uh, there's probably no need for these people to incorporate. There's everybody in the middle that is trying to build their businesses. Uh, the corporation certainly is going to allow you to uh, save taxes, uh, to reinvest back into your business. You know, if you save enough taxes, you can hire another staff member. And then if you hire another staff member, it should just generate more business for you. And you so, watch your prep grow. And you, <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's that's a good way. That's to probably a good, good way to finish. So, thanks all for for watching. Uh, we hope to see you uh, on David and Jerry's Real Estate Cafe again. If you're not registered, like if you don't get our email, send us an email. We'll add you to our list. Um, so uh, we'd love to have you back with us again. Uh, appreciate having you here with us tonight and for all the great questions. Jerry, great job. Thank and you. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Looking forward to uh, uh, speaking with you further, everyone. Have a nice night. Good night. Thank Happy you. prekking. Take care. See you. Thanks.